mute and then hit um, start broadcast and it's all yours. All right, sounds good. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to wait another minute or so and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, I think uh, I think we're good to go ahead and get started. Well, like I said, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, it will be on advanced nonlinear analysis um, in VMAP. Specifically, we're going to be looking at uh, pre and post buckling behavior. My name is Alex Scavdahl. Um, I'll be the presenter for today's webinar. Uh, I'm a stress engineer. I work for structural design and analysis. All right, um, so just a quick agenda of what we'll be doing today. Um, I'm just going to give a, a brief introduction, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about us and what we do here at, uh, at SDA. Then I'll talk a little bit about what is advanced nonlinear. Um, we'll discuss some of the capabilities of advanced nonlinear, and then we have a couple demonstrations, both a thin column and a box beam. Uh, at the end, we'll kind of um, we'll conclude it, and we'll have some time for questions. Um, please note that if you have any questions as I'm going through everything, feel free to type them into the chat, um, into the question window, and we have got two people online with us that will be um, more than willing to try and help answer your questions. All right, uh, so first let's just talk about who we are at uh, Structural Design and Analysis, or SDA, or structures.arrow. SDA was founded in 1997, and we provide expert aerospace structural analysis. Um, we service a wide variety of industries, but we mainly specialize in composites and developing strong, lightweight structures that are readily manufacturable. We work all the way from the low-level support up all the way through developing and testing on main and secondary structures. And our typical programs um, tend to be small to large UAVs to manned and unmanned spacecraft. Um, our team here, we're located in Northern Virginia in Sterling, just a few miles north of the Dulles Airport, and we have over a dozen engineers working here in the office. So like I said, our, our typical projects are small to large UAVs, and um, we've done some work on both manned and unmanned aircraft. One of the biggest projects we're supporting now here in the office is this Orion crew module. We've also done work on the composite crew module, some work on the heat shield, and then you can see here a couple of the uh, aircraft that we've worked on. Along with the engineering services side, we um, also partner with Siemens. We are Siemens value-added reseller, selling software such as FEMAP, FEMAP with the NX NASTRAN, FiberSim, and Solid Edge. And we also um, are partner with Collier Research, and um, with that we sell the engineering software Hypersizer. Along with that, one of our engineers here, um, he wrote a book um, called Learning FEMAP. And so when he was learning FEMAP, he found that it was, uh, there, wasn't, there was not a lot of readily available training material. And so he decided he wanted to rectify that um, for the, the new people that were going to learn it. So if you're interested in that, you can go to learningfea.com. It's a very good book. It's how I learned. Um, so if you're looking for a resource to learn FEMAP, um, you can see his email address here, his contact information, or you can go to learning FEMAP, or learningfea.com. If you're interested in anything on the software or sales side, you can contact our salesman, Marty Civic, and he would be more than happy to answer any questions you have about that. All right, so now let's jump into the fun stuff. What is advanced nonlinear? Advanced nonlinear, it's an add-on solver to the basic VMAP suite of tools. It doesn't come standard, but it's an added package that you can buy. Advanced nonlinear, it runs the Adena solver, but it's run through Nastran. Um, and, but you can find it in the VMAP analysis manager so you can quickly and easily set up your solutions. And so advanced on linear, 
it gives us additional capabilities outside of what the basic nonlinear package does um, with Nastran. And so there's a few different solution types you can choose. You can do an implicit, implicit static solution, an implicit transient solution, or an explicit transient solution. So some of the capabilities of nonlinear, we want to use nonlinear when things become exactly that, nonlinear. So that can be in a geometric sense when our small displacement assumption no longer holds true. Um, when things are, when we have large displacements and large strains. Um, as far as material nonlinearities, we can use advanced nonlinear to kind of look at things when we start, we've moved out of the elastic into the plastic regime. And you can also use nonlinear to analyze contact and contact regions. Today, specifically, we're going to be looking at the pre and post buckling behavior that can be cap captured using advanced nonlinear. So this is both capturing deform deformations that occur before buckles that can lead to buckling, and then capturing and exploring post-buckling behavior. So our first demonstration today, it's on a thin-walled cylinder. It's a 40-foot long cylinder that's going to be fixed, six feet at the base, and then two feet from the tip, there's going to be a 1,900-pound tip force applied. So what we're going to use, see here is that the advanced on linear solution is able to capture a deformation that's going to lead to a buckle that isn't captured by a linear buckling solution. So our linear buckling solution is going to predict buckling at about 7,400 pounds, but we're going to use advanced on linear to show that an instability occurs at about 4,800 pounds. So let's jump into FEMAP here. Excuse me. And so like I said, we have a 40-foot cylinder with a 1,900 tip force applied, and we're fixed at the base. So first, let's jump in and let's look at our load. So as you can see, we've got a 1,900-pound load, but what we also have is this time and frequency dependence. So we're going to take a look at this function, and we've said we've given it um, the load corresponds to this function. So at a time 400, we've hit four times the load, or really, so as we go up, we're really saying what percentage of load is happening along this curve. And so we use this here when we jump into the analysis manager. Right here. So while we solve this, we're going to um, have 400 steps, and we're going to increment each step by one. Um, so that means that as it solves at time step one, it's are going to be applied 1% of load. And if we get all the way up to time step 400, we're applying 400% of the load that we saw in the load step 1. Here we've specified that we only want output every nth step, so we're only getting every other time step we'll see information for. The next, uh, we're going to look at the iteration and conver convergence parameters. This auto increment, this is not the default. This is normally off. So I've gone ahead and turned this on, which and what that does is that turns on these options for the automatic time stepping. Um, everything else here is on the defaults, except for I've turned on this low speed dynamic analysis. So if you have this on, you want to make sure that you've given your model mass, so in your material that you've defined a density, because what this will do is this will use the mass matrix to help with convergence. All right, so now let's look at some of our results. So first, we're going to look at the linear buckling solution results. So as we can see here, this number here down at the bottom, 3.9, this corresponds to at 3.9% or 3.9 times our load, we're, we're going to see some buckling. And you can see the buckling pattern itself or here. But if we jump into our nonlinear run, let's just start at 100% of load. You can see the deflection is started, and we can see the stress. So if you notice here, we're deformed at about a little over 31 inches. So we would expect in a linear solution at two times load, at time step 200, that we would have a about a little under 63 um, inches of deformation. But as we can see here, it jumps over to more than two times the deformation. And so this is something that, um, because we're no longer 
assuming a perfect linear solution that we can't expect exactly proportional uh, load and displacement. But So as we look at our cross section here, you'll notice that this is a little bit thinner than what we started with. If you can see, you can look here at the cross section of what we started. We had a perfect circle. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw on a clipping plane and you can see that our cross section has started to warp. It started to lose its original shape and it's going from a circle more to an ellipse. So I've exaggerated, we're showing an actual deformation, but it's exaggerated three times just so we can have a better understanding of what's happening. So now, let's start ramping up the load a little bit. And you'll notice, as I ramp up the load, that the cross-section is starting to get thinner and thinner. And you can see that as it gets thinner, we're starting to see more stress concentrate here in this region. And so now let's take smaller steps. As you can see, we were really, we've really lost our original cross-section. It's really thinned. We've lost a lot of the structural integrity we started out with. And as you'll notice, between the next couple steps, right here, we really have some buckles that just formed. And we've really lost the load ca uh, carrying capability of this column. And so right here, this is the last time step. So we wanted to go um, all the way up to time step 400, but we lost convergence in time, time step 254. And this is indicating that this structure is no longer able to carry load. It's buckled, and we have noticed that this is much earlier than what was predicted here in the linear buckling solution. So just another thing to note, if we we're just going to quickly compare between, this was the nonlinear solution at time step 250. So I also ran um, a two and a half times 1900 pounds in the static solution. And we're just going to take a look at the differences. So in the static solution, we have our cross, sep cross section has kept its shape. We still have a perfectly circular cylinder. And you'll also notice that we are experiencing, experiencing much less stress on the cross section. The average around here is about negative 1600, and our max is about negative uh, 27 ksi. But in the nonlinear version, you know we're, we're peaking at about negative 46 ksi, and like we've pointed out, the column is buckled and it's no longer able to carry load at this point. All right, so our next demonstration. It's, a, it's on a box beam. It's on a wing-like structure. Let's jump right back into FEMAP. And take a look at it. So like I said, we've got ourselves a box beam-like structure. So we've got an exterior skin. And on the inside, we have our ribs. We've got our spars. We've got a four and an half spar, and then we also have some stringers. And if I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show the thickness here, and you'll see that this inboard region is much more supported than this outboard region, and then the fore part of the swing has more support in the stringers than the aft part of the wing, which has no stringers. So one thing I want to point, about, point out about this model is that so this is all made of aluminum, and we're going to inspect this material. So I made this a nonlinear material. And what we found here is that for nonlinear materials, the best model to go with is nonlinear plastic. And so if you're going to use nonlinear plastic, you need to make sure you have two things. You need the yield criteria. So here we've chosen von Mises. And you need to enter an initial yield stress with that corresponds to that. And you also need to give it a function dependence. So 
here, we're going to look at this function. So this is a stress for strain graph. And so this is a somewhat typical stress for strain graph for 775 aluminum. Here we, in the elastic regime, we've just gone all the way up to 665 KSI. And then in the plastic regime, we've extended it pretty far. So one tip for convergence is that if you're going with a nonlinear plastic material is to just extend this curve out just as long as you can. Try, try not, try to make sure that your model isn't going to have to solve for anything outside of the stress strain curve. All right, so let's start, let's look at our results. And for this one, we're just going to jump right to the end. All right, so as you can see here, this was this is the final time step in our solution. And as you can see, we've got multiple skin buckles and in multiple bays of this wing. And you can see, when we look at the back here, that not only has the skin buckled and it shed its load, but it started to influence other parts of the structure to where here, back on the aspar, we even have a buckle in the web. And we really have an aspar that over 50% in this area has exceeded the yield stress, and so this is likely to fail. And if we look on the inside, we can see some more activity. So when we look down this stringer, we can see that the stringer has really started to wave. There's a lot of out-of-plane motion, and it's really not able to carry much load either. And this stringer also is bent out of shape and this also looks like it's likely to unload. So now let's look at a, uh, let's look at starting here, we're just going to ramp up the load and see what happens as we increase the load. So if you look in the aft bay here, you can see a skin buckle starting to form. And now we're starting to see more and more buckles form. And now we started to see that this skin buckle has really started to push the load all the way back. And we're going to start to see it shift into the spar here. Let's jump all the way up to 90. And we can just see the last few. So a nice thing about nonlinear is even with all this buckling, even with all of this nonlinearity in our model, we're still able to get a converging run. We'll, we're still able to see what happens when with either a planned buckle or an unplanned buckle. We're able to see what happens when those buckling occurs and what happens post well, buckling. All right, so something I want to point out is when you're running on linear, is this analysis monitor is going to pop up, and this will go alongside your run. So what this does is this course to kind of how long it's taking your solution to converge. And so, you, as you see, this isn't just a straight line. We've got a few blips here and there. And what this corresponds to is where the model was having trouble converging. So if we were to go back into FEMAP and look at some of these times, you can see here between 20 and 30, this is, well, this is where our first skin buckle is forming. And between 35 and 40, this is where we started to have a lot more skin buckles. So if, you look, if you're looking at this monitor and you're seeing you know, these books like this, this is kind of the time steps you want to go take a closer look at. So this might, you might be able to use this to troubleshoot and figure out where you want to add more time steps, where you want to change your convergence parameters to kind of push your solution to converge. All right, and here we're just going to look at 
a quick GIF of the wing loading. And so this is just something, this is just a cool feature of Advanced on Linear is you can really see how your structure looks as you ramp up the load. All right, so we'll have time now. If uh, there are any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, if you think your question might be better handled on a more one-on-one -on -one situation, um, feel free to email me or anyone else here at uh, SDA, and we'd be more than happy to help you. All right, Alex, you got a question. Are there any cases in which a linear buckling solution would be preferable to nonlinear? Um, I, I, I can't that, think of any. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of one now. Um, I mean, I would... So, so David, the way I would answer that is uh, linear will work for a lot of problems um, as long as the small displacement theory before the buckle forms is still applicable. Um, so the what what Alex has been showing here, obviously the small displacement theory is not applicable because he's on the on the metal wing. He's showing you you're far into the post buckle realm, uh, even going plastic on your material. And on the pole example, it's not, you know, the shape is changing. And as the shape changes, you're getting weaker in the direction you're applying load, which impacts your buckling. So I think you just have to look at it on a case-by-case basis there. All right, next question, Alex. The stress-strain curve you showed, was that hand-entered or is it stored in a library? Uh, that was hand-entered. I, I have not seen a library of stress strain curves. That was just one that I created myself. All right, we'll give it just another minute. If there's any questions that don't get answered while we're on here, feel free to email myself, Jim Jeans, or Alex, or just our support line. Questions. Um, and if you want to learn more about advanced on Monlayer, please give us a call. You can call Marty or you can myself or Alex as well, um, and we can talk to you talk to you about it. Okay, you got one more question that's not in the question window; it's in the chat window. Um, can you describe better the time steps and what what are you doing with the time realm there? Right. Yeah. So let's go back in here, and so. We'll start with the load. And so here we've applied a load of about 1.5 pounds, and it's referencing the time, uh, this time function. And so what the time function does is it, it moves our load into uh, the time domain. And so here you can see at time 100, we're at a factor of 1. So this factor is um, multiplied by the load. So looking at one, that right. would be one hundred percent of load. And so you can use it right. to ramp up the load. Oh, good. I was going to say, Alex, time is in seconds in the unit system you're in. Okay. It doesn't matter for this problem, but it's basically in seconds. So, so you're applying a load zero, whatever your total force was over a hundred seconds in a linear fashion. And then you went to 400. You just did it 400 seconds to get to four times 1,900. Yes. Yeah, oh, let's so do one last question, and then we'll... Yeah. Let's do one last yeah. question, and then we're, we'll be done. Um, any way to simulate fastener failure due to massive skin buckling? Through fastener failure in skin buckling. Andrew, are you on? Can you answer that one? No. Oh, Andrew's on, but doesn't have a microphone. 
Um, we'll, we'll come back to that one. The answer is yes, but uh, we'd have to have somebody show you how to do it. Um, so how big is your model and what is the requirement for the computing power? Okay, so this one's pretty small. It's about 2,700 nodes. Um, 27,000. Yeah, t sorry, orders of magnitude in me. 27,000 nodes, thank you. Um, as far as computing power, um, this one probably wouldn't require too much, but in a much bigger model, that will obviously go up. I think standard, we normally do at a minimum 32 gigs of RAM and go with um, eight core processors. But that would vary. And how long did it take? Uh, this one, I believe, took about 10 minutes. And actually, I can let me jump to this. Yeah, total time was just under 10 minutes. And that's on a pretty good machine, pretty powerful machine. Um, a laptop, it's probably double that time. It's probably 20 minutes. Um, and, and the time, basically, you see that iteration number 124, you're essentially static condition 124 times. You, know, you could sort of estimate your time that way. Um, Oscar, uh, Andrew Jabola says he'll talk to you offline on simulator. And Oscar, he can also tell you how to find the analysis monitor. It comes up when you run NASTRAN through FEMAP. Um, So, all right, if there's no other questions, let's go ahead and end. And again, feel, feel free to contact us if you have other questions. We'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, we've been using advanced nonlinear around here quite a bit over the last year, and we've been really impressed with how well it works. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everyone.